Hey, welcome to church at Every Nation London. It is so good to have you online. Now, a um, little different today because we are not quite ready to stream our service directly to you from our live service. So you have me giving you the service this morning. I'm going to take you through our new venue, our refurbished venue, which is like 95% ready, but not fully there yet. Um, give you some updates and then we're going to get into the message and I believe you're going to be radically blessed so Are you excited to be at church? Let us know in the chat that uh, you're with us where you're from Wonderful to have you with us anyway, so here we go. We're going to go into our building I'm going to just show you quickly and then we'll get to the word as I said. So welcome to church. Here we go All right So this is the foyer and um we have a awesome space for sitting over here, a little kitchen over there. But um, I, again, can I just pause here and say, I said we're 95% ready, but I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been part of it to make it happen. Our volunteers, our staff have gone like the extra, extra mile to get us this far. So I just want to say thank you for serving, for giving, for just being a part of the mission here in every way that you have, for praying um, it has been an incredible journey. Thank you so much. And if you're a guest with us, we invite you to just enjoy everything that's been done. But church, thank you. You've been amazing. Let's go. Let's carry on. Okay, so Every Nation London. Okay, um, this is going to be the way upstairs to the kids and the youth area. Some great spaces up there where we're going to see young lives transformed, campus ministry, all that good stuff. Listen. This is the way up. We're not going to go up there now. I'm going to take you to our hall and then to our lounge and then we'll get to the message. Okay. So we come in here and we say, there we go. This here is our new space. Come on. Let me, let me just, uh, before we get to the hall, let me just uh, take you to our next steps. Okay. This is, we always into next steps. All right. We want to help you know God and grow in your faith. So can I just pause here and encourage you to think already about your next growth step in this next season. We want you to discover more to life and then we want, you to, we want to help you take a next step in your journey of knowing God and growing your faith, what is known in scripture as discipleship, following Jesus and helping others to follow Jesus, which is what we're all about. So I just want to say to you, there are some great next steps coming up, by the way. Um, on Monday the 19th of this month, so in two, two, two Mondays time, um, three Mondays time, Monday the 19th, um, we have a follow one course starting. Now follow one is a four week experience to help you know God and grow in your faith. So if you need that, if you're new to the church or new to faith, those four weeks online, man, they will change your life. Four Monday nights, uh, just register online. Um, and, and if you've been here a while, you've done follow one, listen, we've got a follow two course starting that Monday night, which helps you to grow in incredible ways. And we've got engaged training also starting online that uh, Monday for four weeks, plus some coaching that'll really help you to share the good news with your friends, your family, or the world. If that's what you need, sign up for engaged training, a very, uh, another great opportunity to grow in your faith. So those are some next steps. Follow one, follow two, and engage training, all starting that Monday night. There's some other stuff happening as well. Check it out online at our events page on the West Kensington Congregation. Okay, uh, so which next step will you take? But hey, here's our auditorium. All right. This is our new space, man. Isn't it looking sweet? Okay, not quite finished yet. Um, the stage is still going to be done, etc. But we're so excited about what's going to happen here. Now listen, today in the message, I'm going to share with you what expectations we and you and I should have in this place. And wherever you're watching from, what, what expectations, what, what do we want to see happen in this place? I'm going to talk about that in the message today. But... Um, September is often a relaunch time, right? Maybe you've had a summer, you've taken a bit of a back, chill out, you've had some holiday, um, you've just changed your routines a bit. September is, is an opportunity and a season of the year to get back into things. So that's why we do at the beginning of September some type of relaunch. And this September, this week, we are doing three days of prayer and fasting of prayer together and of crazy praise. 
Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week, we are fasting. Uh, choose your fast, right? From food, from from social media, whatever. Choose your fast. Choose how what you're going to fast from and how long you're going to fast from it. And uh, take some time to stop doing some things so that you can focus and fill up on uh, more of God and His Word. Okay, that's what fasting is about. It's not just what you don't do, but what you do do. And what we are going to do, in addition to fasting, is to have a we've got a prayer meeting together on Wednesday night, eight till nine p.m. online. Get the Zoom link via your email that you got or the event page online. All right, that's prayer on Wednesday night, eight till nine p.m. and then. On Friday night, we're having a praise party in this place, right? It's just going to be praise and worship from 8 p uh, 7.30 till 9 p.m. Crazy praise in this place. Come along and just express your heart to God. And listen, this is the promise. God inhabits the praises of His people. If you want to know His presence, praise Him and He comes, all right? Praise attracts heaven to earth. And uh, so we're going to end our launch night or launch week with with a night of praise and worship right here so join us for that but now after i've said all of that um i want us to go through and to the lounge and let's get ready for the message okay okay um, here we go this is our lounge and um this is where we get to chill out after the services great coffee refreshments over here and um, this is just a space where a lot of our on-site meetings are going to happen, connect groups. Uh, by the way, they start in a week's time as well, so we'll launch those next Sunday uh, for you. So find a connect group online or on, on somewhere near you. Um, but yeah, we're trusting for some amazing, amazing relational connections and things to happen over here. And just to say again, uh, welcome if you've just joined all right just great to have you with us and if you are part of the church thank you for just your sacrificial giving praying serving to make this all happen okay so we're going to get to God's word now get your Bible out and um, let's get to the message we're going to just position this camera um, we're doing this in one shot okay we're doing this in one shot so um, it's all a little rust, rough around the edges, but um, yeah, fantastic. So again, thank you for joining us. I'm going to start by praying, and um, wherever you are, I pray. I just trust that you will focus now, and you'll say, God, open my um, eyes, my heart, my ears to hear what you would say to me, and I trust that as the word comes to you, the message comes to you, from God's word today that faith will come to you freedom will come from his truth and and hope and purpose will be released in your life and you will be drawn to him the beautiful Jesus so let's pray that um, and uh, Lord we thank you for this opportunity to be together online and uh, we pray that as we gather from all over the world watching this and and sharing church together online, that you will be present with us. You will come to each home, to each place where everybody's watching, to each heart. And I pray that your word will be rich to us today. Give us a vision for um, the next season, Lord. Stir our hearts and warm our hearts today. For anyone who doesn't know you, may they today have a revelation of who you are, Jesus Christ, the Savior, the resurrected one. Um, and uh, so, Lord, we commit this time to you. Open our hearts to the riches of your word. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Well, today, um, I, uh, you know, we've just moved into this new venue. We've been working hard to remodel it, the practical side. But the question we have is, I have asked the Lord is, is what, what do we want to see in this place? I mean, what for, right? To what end? Now, obviously, we as a church, um, are, we say that our mission is to make disciples to glorify God by making disciples um, and making a difference. And we do that on campus, in community around us, um, in the city, a vision for the city and every sphere of society in the city and, and in the nations through church planting. That's, that's what we're about. But just thinking about the place, you know, this place, why do we need a place? I mean, we're online um, and, 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 and we've had this phrase, the, a place of presence and um, 
I must lean in a little bit and ask, well, what do we expect and how, what are we going to do in this place? What, what hope or what vision do we have here? And we're going to go to the book of Exodus today. And the book of Exodus is an Old Testament book, the second book in the Bible. And it's really the journey of how God took his people out of Egypt where they would got into slavery through their own sin and disobedience. They ended up in slavery um, under the Egyptians. Cruel slavery. And God miraculously delivered them from from that uh, slavery and was bringing them to a promised land. And Exodus is the story of their journey out of Egypt and towards the promised land. Now, obviously, they also got stuck in the wilderness, right? Again, because of their sin and disobedience, they had to take the long way around. Maybe some of us feel that we're taking the long way around. Well, in Exodus, we also see that God speaks, doesn't abandon them, but he comes and he gives them hope. He gives them a pattern. In fact, he also gives them what was called the tabernacle, the, the tent, the big elaborate tent of meeting, which is a, is, is a great study you can do sometime, which is a picture ultimately of Jesus who became the way back to the Father for those who had, had, been, had, had been separated from God through their sin. Um, so this is the book of Exodus, this great journey from, from deliverance out of Egypt, but then through the wilderness you know in the wilderness they discovered that although they come out of egypt egypt was still in them you know it's one thing to come out of out of your egypt but you also got to you get your get the egypt out of you right and that's that's what's called sanctification that's a process um but in the middle of this this journey we we focus on the chapter 33 is where one i want to take us today uh chapter 33 of exodus and in this chapter, they're on this journey through the wilderness. And in this chapter, um, uh, God comes back to Moses and he reminds Moses that they are not destined to dwell in the wilderness forever. He reminds him of the promise, the promised land, the land of milk and honey, the land that, he, that they'd set out for to, 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 to move into. And... Um, and he reminds him of that land. And don't we sometimes need reminders? You know, maybe you, need, you feel you're stuck in a wilderness today. And, and I just want to say, I trust God's going to remind you of some promises. Lift up your eyes from the wilderness to the, to the promise again. All right. And he reminds them. And this is the interaction that uh, Exodus 33 is this interaction between God and Moses as God reminds uh, Moses of the promised land they, that they destined to enter. And Moses says these words, he says, as, as God speaks to him, he says, yes, God, that thank you for reminding me. But he says, if your presence doesn't go with us, then we can't go. And then God gives him some conditions. And then he, God gives him this great promise. And this promise is in Exodus 33, verse 14. And God says this, he says, my presence will go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Isn't that an awesome promise? That, that's, that promise echoes throughout the journey of anyone following God, walking with God. My presence will go with you. My presence will be with you and I will give you rest. And Jesus Christ himself echoes the same promise in, 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 in the New Testament where he one day at the end of the great feast, seven days of feasting, religious feasting, he stands up and with a loud voice says this, if anyone is thirsty, or if he could be saying, if anyone is still thirsty after doing all your religion, if you're still thirsty, come to me, he says, and I will give you rest for your souls. Cast off your heavy yoke, take my yoke on you, and I will give you rest for your souls. True rest is rest on the inside. So there's this great promise of God's presence that will lead us to true rest. Okay, and, and, uh, and, and then in order to experience, now it's great to say, well, God's presence, you know, God's presence. Now, if, if you, you know, we as Christians believe that God, for instance, is omnipresent. You're like he's everywhere. So, so what does that mean? God, you know, how can God's presence go with us? But there's, there's this, what I believe there's God's omnipresence, like he's everywhere, but there's also God's holy presence. 
And God's holy presence is where we meet him, where you meet him, where you have a sense God is here, where you hear his voice. Now that can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be a place, but there are certain places and in certain routines and in certain, through certain habits that, that you have holy presence moments, don't you? Where you say, wow, God spoke to me. Wow, I sensed God's presence. I sensed God's peace. Somehow the omnipotent was with me. I experienced him. And all through this, you know, us, us trying to prepare this building, and, and even, even pursuing this building, we've had the sense that God wants us to create a place of presence where people can meet with Him, where we can meet with Him, our friends can meet with Him, where, where it'll just be a holy place of, of meeting with God. Now, while we can meet with Him everywhere, I, I want to just focus us on what Moses did, you know, uh, to meet with God. And it says in here, in, Mo, in, in Exodus 33, verse 7, it says... Now Moses took a tent and he pitched it outside the camp at a distance from the camp. So Moses took a tent. Now this is not the tent, which is the big tabernacle, the elaborate tent that God was, gave some incredible details about. And they built this integrate, beautiful tent, which I'd love to preach on. We'd love to teach on sometime. But this wasn't the tabernacle and it wasn't the permanent temple either. All right. This tent was something that Moses just pitched this ordinary tent, this temporary tent, because this was the place he would go to to experience God's presence. Right? He, he couldn't wait for the tabernacle or the temple. It, it says over here that he, he took a tent and he pitched it. And then it says, and he called it the tent of meeting. Right? So Moses, when God promises presence, Moses pitches a tent and he calls it the tent of meeting or the place of presence. And this is where he would go to and everyone would go to this tent outside the camp, a bit away from the hustle and the bustle and the distractions and the deceptions. The tent was outside the camp and that's where they would go to meet with God. That's what it, it says that this is where they would seek the Lord. All right. And it says too in verse 11 of Exodus 33 that in this place God met with Moses face to face like a friend like one meets with a friend and talks to them isn't that beautiful but there was a place where they heard God's voice where where they where, where Moses experienced that intimate relationship with God a place where he went from his routine place the camp to the tent and this tent was the place where he met with God. He called it the tent of meeting, the place of presence, just like we call this the place of presence. This is a meeting place. Now, you don't have to come here, obviously, online. I pray that online, a routine online for you will be a place of presence, an intentional place. We got to find places where we go, where we step out of our routine, our distractions, the distractions of this world to hear more clearly all right your daily routine to go to this place and open your bible i think it was billy graham's mother i think it was who used to he, i think it's written that or maybe it was smith i can't remember who it was but one of the great heroes of faith wrote that his mother used to sit in the kitchen and take her apron and throw it over her head and that became her place of prayer all right and all the kids knew mama's praying now all right mama's meeting with jesus all right she had a routine of meeting with god what is your routine we in this next season let's establish some routines of coming out of the camp to a place of presence and when we come into this place this building we are trusting that us and everybody who comes here will experience god as, and, and the relationship that we can have with him through Jesus Christ. So here God would speak face to face and there would be this friendship. But there were, I was thinking, what did Moses talk about? What did he ask God? I mean, if you had an audience with God, if you had an audience with God, what would, he, what would you ask? And I discovered that he, in this chapter and in this tent, Moses prayed to what I call please prayers all right twice it's recorded in this chapter that moses asked god 
this phrase, please, Lord, all right? <laughs> please, God. Now, I don't know when last you've prayed a please, God prayer. Yeah, when last have you prayed a pre please, God prayer? I mean, this, this is a desperation prayer, right? In fact, this idea of please is, is an appeal to God's grace and mercy. God, I need you. Please do this. I don't deserve this, but please show up. <laughs> you know, when's the last time you've had a prayer like that, a please prayer that you cried out to God with? Um, you know, I've had a few lately. Um, you know, I, this building, man, has pressed me to many play times say, please, God, you've got to show up here. You've got to help us this week trying to finish this, seeing all the work. Please, volunteers showing up, help showing up and getting us to this place, man. I feel like God's answered, but there were moments where I was, I don't think we can do this. There were moments in the contract arrangements. I don't think we can do this. Please, God, help. Um, I've had a please pray a week ago. I had my monthly immunotherapy and there's always well, potentially some, some uh, side effects. And last Saturday, one of the side effects, uh, two days after my um, immunotherapy treatment, I had stomach cramps like crazy. I've never had those kind of side effects and I've never had cramps like that before, man. I thought I was dying. Woke up Saturday morning and these cramps, tried to phone my emergency line. They didn't answer three times. And, and through that, I was like, God, take this pain. Please take this pain away from me. I can't handle it. Um, miraculously, I, I went to sleep again and you know, woke up just after lunch and the pain was gone. So it was like incredible. But that was a please prayer like crazy. This week, I was in a situation. Ali and I were trying to help some leaders in, in another church navigate some difficult situation. And before I, the calls, I was like, God, I don't know if I can help these people. I don't know if I've got anything to help these leaders with. And again, God just, I said, please, God, you need to help us. And again, God showed up. So I testify that I've prayed please prayers and I've seen God answer in, 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 in ways. And so I trust that if you've been praying a please prayer, that this will be uh, your experience as well. But the two prayers that Moses prayed were these. It, in, in verse 13, he prays, please, Lord, teach me your ways. And in verse 18, um, he prays, please, Lord, show me your glory. Okay. Those, those were two. And I want to encourage us to pray these greater, what I'm going to call, pray some greater please prayers. We all have prayers for our pain, for our need, the stuff we, like me can't, can't do. I need you, God. But I want to encourage us, wherever we meet, when, when you get with God, when you go into your tent of meeting, pray these two in the next season. Pray these two greater please prayers pray god sh please show me your ways and pray this god please show me your glory two prayers that if god answered them many things would change for us and when we come into this place over here when you walk into this place i want to encourage you when you're joining with us online pray this that we would have a revelation and understanding of God's ways. I'm going to preach about those now. And of God's glory. Right? What do those mean? Right? Because I believe these two things are going to happen in this place, in the place of presence. God's ways are going to be revealed to us, ways that lead to life. And God's glory is going to reveal Him, who He is to us more and more and more. Um, and so let's pray these Please prayers in this place. So, and 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 I want to just pause and um, today just look at this first one. Uh, and next week we'll look at the second please prayer. Please God, show me your glory. Today let's just look at this. Please God, show me your ways. And by the way, um, during this week of prayer and fasting, in as in our time of prayer and fasting, let's make this our greater prayer as well. Lord, show us your ways. Show me your ways. Right, to reveal your ways to me. And Lord, show me your glory. Show me more of who you are, your majesty, your perfection. Show me your glory more and more. Um, and, I, those are, and, and when you pray those and you open your Bible and you say, God, show me, I think something incredible is going to happen in your life and through your life in a new way in this season. 
But let's, let's just think about this prayer. Lord, please show me your ways. Why did Moses pray this prayer? Okay, why did Moses pray? Like, like the ways is the direction. The ways is how I should live, what I should do, the, the, the decision, the wisdom I need to, to live this life. Those are what ways means. Like, what are the ways of heaven? You know, there's the ways of earth. There's the way of, that, of this world. But, but Moses said, look, I, I know the ways of this world, but I want to know the ways of heaven. I want to know the ways of, of God. Why did he want to know those ways? Because, here's why. Because he'd experienced the blessing of the ways of the Lord. Think about this. God's ways, God had, a, had made a way for them to escape from the cruel rulers of Egypt in a miraculous way. A weird way. I mean, it involved blood of a firstborn innocent animal put on the doorpost the night before their great escape. I mean great weird things but when they read when they heard those ways and obeyed those ways god made a way out of their slavery all right that's why we and and um then they got to the red sea they couldn't cross the enemy was about to crush them kill them they'd been cornered from every side there was no way through but god made a way right god made a way and when moses obeyed and went that way and they put the trumpeters out and they carried the ark. I mean, suddenly the waters opened and then they went through and the enemy was, was, was uh, destroyed after them. God made a way. See, Moses prayed for God's ways because he had experienced the blessing of God's ways. He'd experienced that God is the way maker, the miracle worker, amen, the promise keeping God. And that's why he prays, Lord, I've experienced the blessing of your ways. Teach me your ways. Now, the reason he prayed that, because he also realized that they were quick to forget God's ways and disobey God's ways and be distracted. I mean, just before this Exodus 33 is, is the account of how Moses was called up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, the first tablets. And while he was up there, the scripture says this, it says, because of his delay, like everyone was waiting at the bottom of the mountain, waiting for Moses to come back down, because there was a delay of him coming down it says it says the the people built a golden calf and started worshiping this golden calf moses realized how quickly they were able to be deceived and distracted that's why he prayed lord show me your ways he had discovered that god's ways were the ways that led to life true life and 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 and, and victory and breakthrough and all that and this is, the, this is the truth we see throughout Scripture, that God's ways and His will is good, is perfect, is pleasing. The great King David was recorded in Acts 2, or, or Acts 2 saying, You have shown me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Right? David says, man, you've shown me how to live. You've shown me the path of life. And it leads right into your presence. It leads right into fullness of joy. Now, here's the question of our generation, though, and, and a question to you. I mean, you might know some of God's ways, but are you convinced that God's ways are the best ways to live? Like through obedience, have you discovered that? You know, man, we need, we need more wisdom and discernment today than, than, than ever before, I think. There's so much confusion, so many choices, so many decisions to make, so many voices giving us advice all the social media thing and then there's so much fear coming at us through the news the economy the you know the energy prices and, and right now like you need wisdom for your finances how are you going to make it through the next season you know what does the future hold like i mean those are big questions you have your own challenges your how are you going to make it through health challenges like you might know i have like, like, how do I make it through here? And I want to say, please, God, not just deliver me. Please, God, show me your ways. And then convince me, convict me, help me to have faith that your ways are the ways that will take me through the Red Sea that I'm facing. Deliver me from the slavery, oppression, 
that I'm facing and take me through to your presence, to your glory, to, to life in all its fullness. Like, am I convinced? Are you convinced about that? When you think about your finances, can, can you confidently apply God's ways to those, to your finances and through obedience and through faith, believe that as you bring your finances into order under God's ways, that, that, that you will be blessed to be a blessing. I mean, can, can you, do you have faith for that? Or are you just trying to figure out yourself or listening to some worldly approach to finances, some get-rich-quick scheme on, on the latest social media post? Come on. Relationships, when you're thinking about how to do relationships, do you submit them to God's ways? By the way, we have a great series starting in a month's time, beginning of October. We're running a series called Radical Romance, all right, which is all about, about uh, just romantic relationships of all kinds and how we, how we journey through those in truth. It's going to be fantastic. Get ready for that and, and, and get your friends coming to that. But there again, we, we, you know, do we do relationships just through the advice of the latest TikTok video? Or do you do it in God's ways? And, and can you discover God's ways and then commit to God's ways? Because those ways, like David discovered, are the ways to life. Amen. And so this is why we pray this great prayer. Please, God. Show me your ways. Just pray it quickly, right, right there. Just take, let's take 15 seconds and just say, God, please show me your ways. We need that. You need that. And I want to encourage you, when you come to God's presence, when you come to the place of presence, when you come out of the camp, and, and we need routines, you need routines of coming away from the camp into the place of presence, the place of meeting. And saying God, and trusting that God will show you his ways like never before. That when we meet together in this next season, we're going to have revelation, not just information, revelation of God's ways. And when we begin to walk in those in obedience and faith and trust, we're going to walk through some things, we're going to walk over some things. You're going to have wisdom and understanding about things that you've you that are going to be amazing to you and your and and the world around you like like daniel you will be proved 10 times wiser than those around you come on god's ways are higher ways let's let's be those who are seekers of the ways and don't don't listen to the world listen to the word get revelation and truth and this what was what happened in the place of presence the tent of meeting god revealed his ways i pray that in this next season you and I and us will pray this great prayer. Please, God, show us your ways. And we will commit to walking in his ways and finding life. And you know, this is where the great word repentance comes in. You know, repentance is when we recognize that our ways have been taking us away from God. And repentance is that change of heart and that change of mind. And that leads to a change of action that says, I'm turning away from and to God's ways, away from the way of the world, away from the way of sin, away of the way from the way of disobedience, to the way of life, who is Jesus. Right? That's what repentance is. And the great David prayed, and he recorded this in the last two verses of Psalm 139. He says, "The search my heart, O God, and see if there's any wicked way in me, or any anxious anxieties in me, and any wicked way in me." And lead me in the way everlasting. Right? Isn't that beautiful? Search my heart, O oh God. See what's in there. The anxieties that come from seeking and following all sorts of idols and distractions. And he says, and, and deliver me from those. Forgive me of those. And lead me in the way everlasting. And ultimately, Jesus is that way, isn't he? Jesus is that way. Um, and I think, as I said earlier, um, we're going to look at the second prayer next week. Please, God, show me your glory. Glory is really the, the, the perfection of God and who he perfectly is. And when we see that, the weight of glory, the imprint of that comes to us because it reminds us of the image 
in which we were created. When we see God as he is and we recognize that we were created in his image, that's when, that's when true transformation takes place in our lives. And, and that's an amazing thing. That's why we need to be glory seekers. Now, we all are glory seekers, but which glory will we seek, right? Who will we seek is the question. And when we seek the, the true God and his glory, incredible things happen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 is a great chapter to read while you're fasting about this. Because that's where God shows, again, the scripture shows us that what happens when, when we see the glory of God, that we are changed from one degree of glory, the, the, whatever we state we're in now, we change to be more like God the more we see him for who he really is. And that, that's going to be an amazing truth we'll look at next week. But let's just um, land this today. Um, you've had quite a lot of me today, and I, I'm going to close this we've talked about what happens in the place of presence do we have a heart to meet with God and if we do let's let's pitch our tent let's have places of presence this will be one you you do yours in your regular routine and and try to meet us here as often as we can let's meet together and let's pray these two priest prayers Lord show me your ways so that I can walk in them set me free from distraction and deceiving ways and let me find the way that is the way of life. Pray that prayer with all your heart and God will lead you to life, friend. Pray this other prayer. Show me your glory, Lord. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and, and meditate on that and let that begin to bubble up in your heart. Because, in fact, the last truth I'll share here is in Exodus chapter 33, just after Moses prayed in verse 18, where he prayed, please let me see your glory God replied and he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. See, God is good, friend. And, and when Moses asked to see his glory, God said, I'll show you my glory by my goodness. And I pray that as you, as you walk in his ways, as you seek his ways, as you begin to walk in those, as you seek him, that you will also experience the goodness of God. Goodness is... is is the, the one characteristic that God chose to show Moses when God, when Moses prayed, please, I want to know you more, no, no, show me your glory. God said, well, I'm going to show you my goodness. And friend, I pray, we pray that in this next week, as you seek him, as you continue to follow him, that you will know the goodness of God in the land of the living. You will know the goodness of God in your life. So as we close, please, Will you commit yourself to praying greater please prayers? Whatever please prayers you're praying, add these great ones. God, show me your ways. Please, God, I'm tired of walking the ways of this world. Show me your ways, Lord, that lead to life. I believe it do, they do. And then, Lord, show me your glory. Show me who you are more and more. I want to be more like you. This is the journey of discipleship. So, friend, that's the message for today. Thank you for joining us here. Um, I want to bless you today as we go. Remember, there are next steps you can take. The follow course, sign up for those online. We'd love to help you in any way we can. But right now, I pray that you'll be blessed this week of greater revelation of God's ways, greater confidence that as you have chosen God's ways in whatever area of life, maybe it's in a relationship, and you committed to walking, you're not yet seeing the goodness, but you'll keep walking and know that the goodness will, you'll bump into the goodness of God on those ways because they do lead to life. I bless you with confidence to walk in God's ways. And I bless you with knowing the glory, the goodness of God this week. I pray that you'll join us in some way as we commit ourselves through fasting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Choose your fast. Pray together on Friday evening. Um, 8 till 9 online and um, come to this place of presence if you can for a great time of praise on Friday evening. So hey, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Um, love you. Let's keep uh, following Christ and knowing his goodness in our lives. Amen. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Amen.